Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial about how to curve an arrow. You can see the curved arrow here. That's, what's that? Okay, it's not the world's greatest vector arrow design in the world. However, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to curve it. So just remove that now. And here's the arrow. So I'm just gonna duplicate it. So it's a vector layer, standard vector layer. And once you've got that, you curve to tool. That's the key one here, curve to pen tool. So with the curve to pen tool, just go over here to layers. You can't see layers, it's in the window and layers. And also, if you can't see the pen tool itself, you may have moved it by your toolbar. So it might not be in the same position because everyone can change their tools there. Now, zoom in, I would suggest. So navigator, just zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit better. Curve to tool and just hover over the bar, just along the top and you can see a little plus appears. A little plus appears there. Just click very close to the start and click again, click there. Because what I want is I don't want the bend to be sort of, it really distorts the arrow as well, the arrow head. So I'm just gonna, that's why I always add a couple of points right at the start. Now I can just add them, just add them just one and then below, again, there and there. And again, zoom in so I can just show you a bit better. Curve to pendle, just click there and again just below there and there. And of course you can make a uniform design, space them if you want very carefully. Possibly a good way of doing that would be to use view and maybe use guides or maybe show the ruler, uh, the grid I mean. Ruler wouldn't be much use. You could use ruler as well, I guess, and see how you space it, but the grid is also another option, so you can see the grid, so you can see nicely spaced. Show, I don't want that. So now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and you've got your design there. You've got all the points all the way along. Now, sadly, there's no, like Illustrator, you've got uh, this, you can add some points. There is no feature for that, so you have to add them yourself, but there is a menu command that can add them. So, curve to tool, just go along and then drag upwards. Now you can make it, and again, if you want to, zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit better. Again, click there, and you can see you can move that up. Just make it below, so it's just below that one. And again, that's why grid is probably quite useful, so you can just see you've got a nice alignment. And you can move that one down, move that one down again, just keep it aligned, because you can move it. So it, it might, it, of course, if that's what you want, if you want thin and wide, perfectly reasonable, but if you want it uniform, it's just best to just keep that. And then move that along, you can see the other points, and just drag that up. And of course you can drag it up. A reasonable amount, and you can see your design there. Again, just drag that down. Break that down a bit. A bit further up. And you can see your design there. And obviously you could add some additional points there and tweak it. If you want to add some more there, just add some more. And then just drag that down or drag that up. And again, it might be best just to add some points there. You can just reduce that down a bit. So that's it. You can tweak it, obviously, change it up and down as much as you want to get it as uniform as you like. How to create a curved, a curved circle. This is from scratch. Previously, I was showing how to curve an actual existing one. Well, a vector design, I should say. How to create something like this. Well, I think the best thing is to use a grid. So a grid is easily the best because you can do that. So view and show and show grid. You can change your grid preferences Photoshop preferences and grid, make it. Once you've done that, what you can do, go down here to ellipse tool and just quickly create a shape, fill, zero and no stroke. And create your circle. And you can see just you should position it there and you've got it nicely on that center point. Now I always quite find that it's just as easy just to quickly change the opacity and it's not particularly where I want it, I just want it, want it there. Yeah, okay, that's where I want exactly. Just nice to position it right on that center. 
Okay, so I've got my circle. Change opacity again. Opacity is very useful just for quickly doing that, just seeing to the grid. Now, I always wonder why there's no grid overlay feature instead of behind. Always that would be nice if they could put a sort of over the top. Anyway, that's a mere quibble again. <laughs> there's loads of little things that I think would be nice if you could do certain things. However, that's not available. Right. Drinking a cup of coffee, got coffee all over my keyboard. That's a good way. Okay, now hold down the Alter Option key and duplicate. Now that's on the keyboard, along with the coffee. Not a good idea. And resize. And then position it. Now, again, you could use, of course, the opacity, but you can use alignment. So I've got it there, and that's going to be the size, the width of my arrow. And I'll just use the alignment tool. So I've selected both. Go over here and align there. Now what you can do, layer, combine shapes, and subtract front shape. So that's it, you've got your donut shape. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut away. Now I'm gonna use a rectangle tool, and I'm create a very thin rectangle. And I'm just gonna go up to this point, along the edge there, in the center. And I'm just gonna go down to the center of, the thing. that's what I want. Now you could use other ways of doing this. You could use a triangle or something, and just cut through, design, that would be just possibly as easy. Just simply create a triangle and then do that from the center point. Just do this, there, from there, and you could cut through design. There's always lots of different ways to do it, but that's one, another option, so I'm just gonna remove that. I'm just using this one approach. Now hold down the Alter Option key. This is the way I always do it. <laughs> Now, what you've done, I've selected both that and that. So I've got that rectangle and the circle, or the donut, I should say. And then I can do layer, and again, combine shapes, subtract front shape. And then I can drag this one over, position it there again, and on that center point. And that's why I've got the grid, just makes it easier. Just rotate. Okay, should position, rotate, reposition it. I always find it hard to select that central point, so that's why I've got the grid again. Grids is much easier, so I just do it visually. I can see that's what I want to remove. I want to remove that chunk there. Now in Illustrator, you could do this very easily. In Photoshop, the tools, the vector tools are very limited, I think. They, they could add a lot more. I would love to see a lot more vector features in Photoshop. I know you could do it, copy it over into Illustrator, come back out. But I think it should be automatically within Photoshop as well. Press return. Then select both of those. And you can see because I've got it on that center, it's just nice and uniform. That's what I'm trying to aim for. So again, go to layer, combine shapes, subtract front shape. Now I've got that design there. What you can do, go to direct section tool, and this may be a different position for you depending on your Photoshop, how you customize your toolbar. And you can select all of that. Everything selected, everything selected over there. You've got this option here, merge shape components. Now what you can do, direct selection tool, and you can just select those points. I can zoom in just to show you, just select there. Direct selection and just select that point. You don't want to select anything like here, just want to select that point. So you can just then click and remove. Now you've got this gap. So what you can then do is you can now add triangle. Now this may be in a different position. Again, depending on the customization, it's still a vector shape, and you can drag and create that. And you can make it any size. Hold down shift to make it nice and uniform if you want. And I'm gonna zoom in again. You can see the triangles there. And you've got this little dot. Dot's quite useful for making a nice round in design. And that's what I'm gonna go for. I can resize that again, so. Okay, once you've done that, what you can do, drag it over, rotate it, and that's why it's nice to do it from the top, so you can start, so you, if you do it somewhere different, you have to then work it, it just makes it easier just to, and then you can use the grid to nicely align. You can see from there that it's, yeah, about equal. You could zoom in a bit more if you want and you've got your arrow design there, that arrow head. Now also you could do is quickly go over here to create some rectangles and you could add rectangle, some feathering going off at an angle. 
But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to create the basic arrow shape, which is that. Now, once you can do, select all of that design using direct selection tool. Make certain they're selected over there. All selected, and then go over to layer and combine shapes and unite. So it's all united into one shape. Now what you got, you go up here and you've got this option up here, merge shape components. So it's all merged into one. And you've got your design. Which of course then what you can do, you can always go to edit and define a custom shape, click OK. And you've got this a custom shape now. So if you want to use a custom shape tool, go to the custom shape tool and then just go down there and you can see your arrow design there which you can then add very quickly into any project in future. Or of course, you could also just drag it over into your library. So that's window and libraries. So just put it in there and then you can bring it back at any point. And of course, you could always make multiple variations of that. And you can, of course, tweak this design in numerous ways, maybe add some additional points and modify it, add additional paths to it. Perfect reasonable as well. So maybe have a rectangle, but you could just add a rectangle to it. And you can see you can create all kinds of different, very simple, or maybe a, a circle at the end of it, if that's what you want. So you just add a quick circle design there as well. And again, you, of course, combine that as well. It's perfectly reasonable. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Critter, Finity Photo, etc. Also, please add some comments. Like I say, if you've got a, a better approach, please let me know in the comments. I'm certain that people will put, no, it's a better way of doing it. It's uh, using this or using that. I'm always happy. And then, of course, I can do a video tutorial later, maybe explain some other methods that, of course, sometimes I can work from that. There's always many ways in Photoshop doing things. Like I say, I think Illustrator is probably a better application to use for this. But Photoshop, you can do it. A dislike or like. Thank you much.